behalf with uh, Secretary Espinosa's uh, presence with us before she goes off to do other things. Um, I would ask if, um, I know there are some questions from the press, but I'd like first to ask if anybody uh, who is not a representative of the media has any comment that they would like to make or or reflection or question to Secretary Espinosa or to uh, Alex Bogaliskis or Ambassador Barrio or, or Fenn or myself uh, regarding the book. Don't be shy. Rosalind, is your, the fact you're getting up that you have a question? No. <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass you. That's all right. Please, sir. Um, and I'll ask a question of the secretary. In her remarks, she noted that there was perhaps not an identical perspective on climate change. But on the broader question of energy, how does she see that unfolding within the, the, the North American context? Of course, Canada has tremendous energy capacity, and there have been in the past some efforts to try and uh, take some of what we know down to Mexico, not always with great success, but looking forward, I would ask uh, the Secretary if you see that is not a, a quite promising area for uh, further development. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Kevin? Kevin, the mic isn't working. Where's the there it goes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, of course, definitely. I believe that um, this is an area where we have great potential. Um, I do want to to thank the mention that uh, was made just just a moment ago about the uh, transboundary reservoirs agreement between Mexico and the U.S. And um, I think that the, this is an area where the three countries are in full agreement in the sense that we need to cooperate uh, more and we have to view the energy security issue as um, really uh, one of a top priority and we have to, to make all the efforts so that, that the um, North America uh, has full energy energy security and that it is become it is part of the competitiveness agenda. So in in that sense, um, I do I fully agree. There is lots of, of area for for improvement. In the case of Mexico, uh, as you know, we have passed in this administration an important reform in the in the oil sector which is uh, the first reform ever that has been made to, to that uh, important area of our economic activity. Um, our oil company, Pemex, still has to overcome a lot of the, uh, uh, the disadvantages that it had to, to face in the decades uh, ago by not allowing um, the use of um, maybe more efficient providers in some areas of its activities of production on, and distribution. Um, there is an expectation that um, in the next government there could be um, an, an increased and improved and expanded uh, reform that uh, no doubt would uh, allow much more uh, foreign investment in our oil sector. So I, I think that's, that's for, for the oil, but we do have also an enormous potential in the field of uh, renewable energy. Uh, in Mexico, we are increasing the, the share of renewable energy in, in our uh, energy uh, total production. And um, this is also an area where Canada has a, a very competitive standing worldwide. Uh, with the United States, for instance, we are working also on um, transboundary um, energy markets or, or schemes that allow for energy to be, to be uh, uh, traded between, uh, in this case, Baja California and California. And um, 
there is also uh, very clearly uh, the need to to use to make use of the shale gas uh, reservoirs that we that we have and for which we have not yet been able to uh, to start production because of the the need to have the uh, adequate uh, technology so definitely there's there's enormous area of opportunity for businesses for government and to to have a, a, all of this with a vision to have in North America energy security that contributes to competitiveness worldwide of the region. Muchas gracias, uh, Patricia. Please. Thank you. Thank you very you much. might want to identify yourself to the uh, to the foreign minister. I have a predictable question given my role. I'm, the, I'm Andre Fleur, I'm Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs at Carleton. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I want to pick up on something that Jennifer just mentioned in, in, her, in her presentation. What, what do you see as some of the key research items or agendas that would benefit uh, the evolution of the relationship between Mexico and Canada? Within that, role, within that environment, what kind of role do you see for university-based research for partnerships between institutions between Canada and Mexico. Thank you. Well, thank you. As I mentioned, I see that the the agenda is is absolutely so so broad that you could, if, if I was uh, in the academic sector, I I would say, well, almost any area of, of my interest would have a potential to be developed in, a, in, in this kind of, uh, of uh, work uh, between a partnership with Canada and Mexico or a trilateral partnership Mexico-US-Canada. Um, but I would, I would want to insist on, on one of the areas that I, I was mentioning my, in my initial presentation, which is uh, the border issues. I, I do believe that the borders, Mexico, US, US, Canada, are areas of opportunity. They have been seen for many years as uh, areas of conflict and problems. But I think we have to change that, that view and convert them into areas of opportunity. I, I do believe that if we manage to have a conversion, um, ¿cómo se dice? Una convergencia, convergence, convergence between the two schemes that we have in, in regarding border management, and we really develop a vision of a regional, a regional view that allows, uh, facilitates legal flows of persons and trade, and that concentrates and even enhances the capacity to prevent illegal uh, activities, um, we will be gaining even more competitiveness as, as a region. I think that's, that's a very important area of opportunity. And it's very complex, and uh, there the academic work is very helpful because in all the countries, borders involve so many different uh, areas of government, federal and uh, state or local governments. And that makes it very difficult to develop this kind of uh, a holistic vision, comprehensive vision. In fact, this is one of, 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 the, um, of the areas that Andres and myself, we spoke about the need to, to, to really develop and, and work on, and I'm very grateful that, that he has um, promoted this kind of uh, research and study, in-depth study, and I do believe that this uh, book uh, today is also a cont contribution in, in that direction. Um, in, in the area of, of migration, and uh, maybe if we put it also as, um, tourism as a um, job creating uh, sector and as a, a sector for growth in, uh, in our economies. Uh, we, we should also, uh, uh, it's, it's very closely linked to, to this uh, issue of border management. Facilitation of traveling, facilitation of legal flows of people and goods 
is really makes um, a very positive uh, equation, uh, not only for 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 the border, but for the countries as a whole themselves. Gracias, uh, Patricia. I um, will now ask uh, our our friends from the media who had some questions uh, before we we wind up. Uh, I should like to point out, though, before doing that, that uh, two things. The first is that there is a very interesting chapter in the book which has uh, business success stories uh, which have been contributed by Canadian entrepreneurs and Canadian businesses that have been working in Mexico successfully and have been able to, uh, to point out the, the, the advantages of their Mexican presence. The second is to, is to say that uh, fortunately, the National University of Mexico, uh, El Centro de Estudios para América del Norte, the CISAN, will be publishing a Spanish uh, translation of this book in Mexico in mid-August, and we will be doing some presentations in Mexico City and perhaps in Monterrey uh, of the book uh, in its Spanish version. Uh, Mike Blanchfield, I think you had a question uh, for the foreign minister, Mike is from Canadian Press. Good morning, Minister. Uh, Secretary, I just want to know, um, you talked in your speech about expanding the uh, temporary uh, worker program. Uh, as you likely know Canada's making changes to its employment insurance uh, scheme it wants to match more unemployed Canadian workers to jobs that need to be done in Canada and you've talked about expanding into other sectors so I'm wondering if you could perhaps expand on what sectors uh, Mexico is looking to expand into and what you plan to do to uh, minimize any um, any potential loss of jobs for people in your country that want to take advantage of this continuing program before, before uh, asking Secretary Espinosa to, to reply, can we take the other question from uh, iPolitico? Hi, hi, Secretary Espinosa. Uh, you mentioned um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and as you know, Canada and Mexico are both waiting to find out if we'll be uh, invited into the negotiations. I wondered if you foresee a scenario where either Canada or Mexico uh, is invited to join while the other isn't. And um, also, when if you've uh, had uh, been talking to the uh, the Americans, uh, when we might expect uh, that decision to ultimately be made. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions that uh, anyone would like to, or or comments that anybody would like to make before I ask uh, the secretary to respond, and then Jennifer Jeffs to come up and give the thanks for her presence here at the breakfast. Uh, yes, from Embassy uh, newspaper, magazine, no, no, newspaper. Hi, uh, my name is Sne, I'm with Embassy uh, magazine. Um, I was just wondering, you, you mentioned that uh, meetings for the Canada-Mexico partnership are taking place every year. Um, I was wondering whether you could possibly expand on that a little bit and just tell us about the progress uh, that is being made this year, and also looking ahead, to, um, well, to the year ahead, what are what are the goals um, that uh, officials are looking at, uh, just in terms of that? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Thank you. Um, well. First of all, on the temporary workers program, I think that it is important to, to recall that for many years, more than 35 years, we have had a very successful temporary agriculture workers program. And um, I do believe that, uh, and this is a point we make uh, always when we, when we uh, address the issue of migration, um, Mexico is a, a country not, not only of origin of migrants, but it's also a transit country, it's, a, it's also a receiving country we have. So we, we really have all the different uh, um, uh, facets of the migration uh, phenomenon. So um, I think that we have to, to view the, the migration issue also as a 
part of the economic equation and as a very fundamental element for raising competitiveness in any kind of uh, situation. And um, of course, whenever there is a um, difficult economic uh, situation in a country and uh, a, a unemployment is, is rising, there is always uh, the concern that uh, any kind of uh, temporary workers program will um, will give up, take away uh, possible jobs for those uh, people that are unemployed. I, I think that uh, the experience shows that this is really not, uh, in, in most of the cases, not uh, the real situation. Look at uh, what is happening in some areas uh, here in Canada, in the US, in other developed countries, where uh, while they do have high levels of unemployment, they are suffering from the lack of uh, workers for in some sectors. I think that it is important that we look at the, at the labor market uh, in a much more detailed manner uh, without um, such a, uh, uh, without giving it such a political um, approach, and uh, that will really address the issue in a in a more uh, maybe technical economic way. Where do we need? What do we need really to to become more competitive in this or that sector? And uh, do we have those resources? In, in many ways, it is uh, part also of, of, the, of the need to integrate chains of production uh, internationally in order to be able to compete better in, in the world. So I, I think that um, there are really many areas of opportunity in the service sector, in the hospitality sector, in the construction sector. Um, we, we have been um, a, addressing this issue and, uh, and, and proposing that we, we should implement some pilot uh, programs in order to, to, to see how they, how they work. This does not mean, for, of course, to say, OK, anybody who wants to come is, is allowed to come. It has to be, um, I think our goal, our common goal should be, let us create a very ordered and um, controlled and legal flows of uh, migration in order to address the needs that the labor market uh, has. And, and that is really a, a part of, of, of the reality that all countries are facing, some in more uh, high-skilled um, areas and others in, in less uh, skilled areas. And in fact, Mexico, the US, and Canada, we three are very complementary economies in so many areas. So um, I think that there is really an enormous uh, potential. On the, on the TPP, I think that um, we have uh, we have been, I, I would like to say, we have been in consultation with the Canadian authorities for a long time about um, this um, uh, scheme of uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. And um, as you know, our two governments uh, announced their intention to join uh, formally the negotiations in the last APEC meeting in, in Hawaii. Uh, I think it's a very legitimate um, uh, interest and that it is also a good um, signal for the region, for the role that North America should be playing in the in the future internationally globally uh, that both of our countries are interested the us of course is already participating there um, i think that uh, as as the um, negotiations are ongoing and the way the the different issues have been presented to us it is really an agenda about making political decisions to address or to include in those negotiations all the sectors that have been 
uh, proposed or that have been put on the table. Um, there is no doubt that in any kind of, uh, of scheme of this nature, uh, there may always be some sectors that feel that their interests are being uh, are, are being touched and po and probably affect negatively affected. But uh, I do believe that as governments, what we need to do is to make the general assessment, the broader assessment, whether this is good for the country as a whole for the role of the country, in this case also for the role of the region as a whole, and uh, yes, internally look at ways to address also the concerns of some sectors that they may have regarding how they would be affected. I, um, we have done a, a very, a, very intensive consultations with all the countries participating. I think that I don't think that there is an agenda against any country um, in particular. I think it's more an agenda where there are um, really uh, there is an interest of putting the um, the rising the the bar for whoever wants to join has to be able to at some point in time join and and commit. To these, to all these uh, sets of of uh, of, um, of actions in the different areas. Uh, on the on our partnership, well, I think the partnership has been very important. It's not uh, it it means it meets normally at the under secretary level, and um, it gives us the opportunity to have a a broad review of uh, what has been uh, going on in the bilateral relationship. As you know, in, in government, like in any other kind of activity, uh, we tend to, to be always diverting our attention to the immediate needs or the most urgent and pressing matters. So this mechanism, the, the partnership between Canada and Mexico, allows us at least once in, 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 the, in the year to sit down together with our Canadian colleagues and to review exactly what has happened, where we stand. We do have um, a program of, of work, a plan of action, um, where we have set the, our priorities and areas of interest. So it is, it is a very useful instrument in order to make sure that our actions and our, the direction of our work is not lost in the everyday uh, work of our administrations. We have been, um, as, as I was saying in my presentation, we have been successful in addressing uh, many of the issues regarding competitiveness, regarding the people-to-people -people contact, um, we have really a very broad agenda, but it is important. It, it constitutes always a good opportunity to to put the uh, bilateral relationship in, in in the center of the attention of the officials that uh, have a responsibility in that area and that need to be uh, really behind uh, the driving the process forward. Muchas gracias. Uh Senora Canciller, thank you all very much uh, for this uh, opportunity, and I now ask uh, Jennifer Jeffs to uh, come up and, and give the thanks. And just quickly, Jennifer, before you reach the podium, I want to thank Andres, as always, for being a superb moderator, for keeping uh, this end of the table in line. And for being can one of Canada's best Mexican friends. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much, and thank you for, for, uh, for giving me the honor of, of thanking the minister for her remarks today. It is, it is such a thrill for me to, to be here, um, standing here with you in the room. Uh, the last time we had such a high-level visit was uh, when President Calderon came, which was 2010. And uh, Ambassador Barrio and I got, became very friendly at that time when we were uh, organizing a dinner for him in Toronto, which was which was a rousing success. And I have to say that uh, it, for me, con mi uh, corazón mexicano, <laughs> cuerpo canadiense, corazón mexicano, <laughs> after I spent uh, seven years in Mexico, the the Canada-Mexico partnership is something that I, has great emotional 
profoundly um, emotional, uh, personal, and professional meaning. So it's really, it's, it's so delightful to see you here. And uh, I have to say that I was invited actually to do a seminar in Mexico this week, and I, I explained to my friends I can't because Mr. Minister Espinosa is coming, and they said, no way, she's way too busy. The OAS, the G20, all those G20 meetings, no way she's gonna come to Canada. And I was saying, I think she is. And they were actually quite annoyed with me because they said, no, you know, I, how can you believe? And I was calling Alex, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> so we really appreciate that you've taken the time from your extraordinary schedule and, and got here this morning at, at the wee hours and, and still spent the time here. It's really lifted the whole occasion to, uh, to a different level. Uh, I have to see this, the, C, the CMP partnerships. I've been coming to those meetings now for a few years and uh, this year uh, I'm just I'm thrilled to see people like Julian here and, uh, and Minister Baird was at the reception last night and now with Minister Espinosa here today. It's, it's, it's remarkable. I think that there's really some traction and uh, it's in little pockets, but if we all get together, I think we're going to get somewhere. Uh, as the minister said, we can do more things together than apart. Um, I just, I, I wanted to uh, just say that uh, these, this book has been also a real team building effort and I hope that we can continue it and I hope that uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing how the plans for, for meetings in Mexico go because I think this is again something that's an, uh, you know, a real achievement and a real milestone in the relationship between the two countries. So I, I want to thank the Minister so very much for, for joining us here today and for giving your blessing to the book and I do hope you will sign my copy. <laughs> Thank you.